My name is Melania Figueroa, and I'm a group leader at the Crop Immunity Team at CSRO. So I um, investigate uh, rust evolution. So we were very interested in UG99 because it, it has been a mystery for such a long time. So it's been 20 years since its discovery. And, um, and so we, we're quite puzzled about you know, what really happened. So somatic hybridization is basically a process in which two strains of rust will fuse at some point, and we think that this happened in wheat uh, um, during the vegetative growth of the fungus. So the two, the two strains fused and exchanged material. So in this process, one of the strains actually donated one nucleus to the other, other strain. It, it's different to sexual reproduction in the sense that in sexual re uh, uh, reproduction, you have recombination of genetic material from the mom and the dad, you know, and it is an assortment. Whereas in somatic hybridization, you basically have this migration of material, but that material is exactly like the donor. And so the project started when we were sequencing at the genome of UG99, and, and this was uh, at the time in my group at the University of Minnesota. And our collaborators here at CSRO um, were sequencing the genome of another um, wheat stem rust strain called uh, 21-0. And so we took a, a comparative genomics approach. We were um, trying to, to determine what, what's different between these two strains. And the Australian strain actually had migrated from South Africa in the 1950s. So what, what we found was that one of the nucleus of UG99 and a nucleus from the isolate in Australia, 21-0, actually were nearly identical. And so that was very surprising. And we, um, really work hard in trying to understand is, 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 is it real, right? Or is this, is this an artifact or are we missing something? So that, that hypothesis of um, somatic hybridization being involved as a mechanism for the emergence of UG99 was under a lot of scrutiny. And really the more that we looked at it and, and the more analysis with it, the more, um, convinced we were that that was, that was the case. So we analyzed different possibilities. Was it a sexual origin? Was it somatic hybridization? And, and really all the data that we gathered and all the analysis supported that indeed it was somatic hybridization. The fact that, that these organisms have the capacity to hybridize and, and, and generate new combinations that could lead to new virulences and therefore evolution to overcome resistance in the field, really, really puts a different flavor on the story. The scary part comes to know that what if UG99 hybridizes again with another strain and therefore we have a new virulent, that we haven't, a virulent strain that we haven't seen before. So, I think it's important to consider that, yes, we need to worry about sexual reproduction. We need to worry about the presence of barberry uh, near wheat fields, because it is clear that that can have an impact in the evolution of the pathogen. But we also have to be mindful that introductions of new strains to, new, to, to geographic regions 
could mean that we now have another strain that could hybridize and provide variability in the population that would then facilitate the evolution of, of new virulences and, and the defeat of all the resistance genes that are still effective. Surveillance is very important. And when we run into a strain that is different, that is, it's, it, it represents a threat, I think it's important to look at it very carefully. And, and so we are um, thinking about applying these, these techniques to other non-UG99 strains that actually have caused epidemics in, in other parts of the world. And why is that is because we need to know how many haplotypes are, are there and how different they are. And ultimately with the goal that we gather enough information that we can make predictions, predictions about what, what, what is the likelihood that virulence will evolve? What is the likelihood that that particular resistance gene is gonna be overcome? I think that is, that is the next step. I think we have to move now to predictions. Uh, based on genomic data, we can make predictions. And, and that really takes us to another level in which is that we can respond a lot faster than before. So I think having a network of, of scientists out there, you know, looking at these strains, collecting material, and connecting with scientists in the lab to conduct this analysis is critical. And I think it's, 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 it's a moment to think about how we work together and how can we make better use of the surveillance network that we have in place, which is really remarkable. 20 years ago, with when UG99 was discovered, these technologies were not available, but now they are. And, 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 and we're in a position to exploit those technologies and understand more about the biology of the organisms. Going forward, I think it's, it's, it's important that we continue our re surveillance efforts. And I think um, the more coordination we have, the better. And, and the more that we work as a team, the better.